Well, hello and welcome to Cart Vault TV. I'm Paul and you join me mid-session on a three-day, three-night trip with mate Lee down at my local club lake in Kent. Now it's the end of September and autumn is upon us. It's the beginning of autumn. The leaves are starting to turn brown. There's berries on the trees behind me and it's usually big fish time. I always seem to do well in the autumn. This time last year I had a couple of 30s from this lake. I just enjoy the autumn time. It's just a nice time to be out. I haven't been out much as I should be this year because of uh, issues that shall I explain to you later on in this little film. Um, but yeah, what I'm going to try and do this trip is uh, talk through like some few tips, tactics, rigs and bait to try and catch these fish in the autumn. I'm not saying we're going to catch anything but at the moment as we stand here we're halfway through and all I've caught is bream so yeah they don't count do they um, yeah there's a few little tips that I try to use in the autumn because this is a big lake this is 30 acres in size and it's depth of up to 30 foot so I need to try and get that bait to the bottom and because the lake is so deep I need to drag any fish that are in the upper layers down onto my bait so there's certain things I do to hopefully make that happen I'll also go through like some of the basics because I've got some guys at work asking me, you know, because they're new to carp fishing, just to go through like the basics really about wrapping up and making sure you hit the right spot all the time. So I'll go through that as well. So without further ado, let's start the vlog and hopefully we can catch a carp. Oh, please let us catch a carp, please. Another thing I like to do on this lake, because it's deep and it's quite uniform all the way out, it just shelves off, there's no like bars and weed beds, well, there's the odd weed bed but nothing too much. I like to bat lead to keep everything pinned down um, to stop you know fish from bumping into your lines. It, it's just another little percentage that adds up, in my mind anyway that you know it's just to stop the fish banking into your lines basically so I just like to bat lead and to do that obviously once you've tightened to your lead you just loosen your clutch off there's plenty of ways to do this this is the way I do it though so here's a little back lead it's only a light one and this is going to help pin down my lines onto the bottom and the other positive thing for them is especially at night if you've got a carp on at night and it stops the carp running through your other rods because they literally un the lines dangle down under my rod tip so that's another little edge for using bat leads so all you do is you clip it onto your line it doesn't help when you ain't got your glasses on because I'm blind as a bat at my age so there you are clipped it onto the line now it pushes into that little bit of silicon there so it won't come off and then you just slide it down the line it hits the bottom like so and tighten up to it send it out a bit further into the lake feel it down onto the bottom like so line up the reel handles So, make sure the clutch is set correctly. Back onto the rests. Well, still blanking at the moment, just more bream. So, I'm just going to take a little time now just to tell you about the bait I'm using on this trip. Now, I've been with Eclipse Baits seven years now. And one of the major things about carp fishing for me is confidence. And if you've got confidence in a bait, then that's one variable out, out. You know, you haven't got to worry about the bait. All you've got to worry about then is where you're fishing it. And, uh, you know, if you're in the right spot and you've got a sharp hook. <laughs> so bait for me is massive confidence. 
and I'll, you know, I use this bait absolutely everywhere I go because I know the fellow who rolls it, Dave, we go to the factory a lot to watch the boilers being made and we get involved with Dave a lot doing filming for him as well and at the factory we watch them being rolled and we know that only fresh ingredients go into this bait and we've seen his recipes and the guy is like a, a, a bait god. He's been rolling now for nearly 30 years. He's rolled for all the big boys. And he started Eclipse Baits, I think, back in 2006. But as I say, before that, he was rolling for everyone else. So, yeah, confidence is key. So what I've been using this trip is a bait called Supreme Cream. Excuse the bag, this isn't the bag they come in. This has come out of my freezer like this. So this is a Supreme Cream. Beautiful bait, absolutely beautiful. It's a nut based bait. It's got um, lots of nut meal in there basically. Tiger nut, peanut, and it's got like a, a creamy overtone to it. And believe me, I wish you could smell it. <laughs> it smells delicious. That is a really good all year round bait. Use that in the winter and you can use that in the summer as well and it, it catches all the time. That's what I've got on one of my rods and I'm tipping it off with something called icons. Now these have been around for years and uh, you can buy the you know the imitation corn, the plastic corn, and that's what icon stands for, imitation corn, but these aren't plastic. In lakes now where you know plastic's being banned, oh there was a beep, and the beep on my rod. Just a liner I think. Yeah, where plastic's being banned. Um, we can use these because this is made out of the same ingredients that pop-ups are made out of so they're just made into like the shape of sweet corn you can buy all different flavors of these all different colors as well and I like topping my bait off with them a because it gives a little bit of buoyancy to my bottom bait and B the bright color can help you know the fish zone in on your hook bait so to speak and again these smell absolutely beautiful these are the sweet corn flavored ones but you get lots of different flavors like banoffee and things like that They're beautiful little things put on your on your hook um, and also my pop-ups and wafters I've been using the supreme cream barrels these are really nice neat little baits you know they're the colour of these ones is that lovely pink. I've also got white ones, but I found I get more bites on the pink. And again, it's that nutty, creamy smell. Beautiful bait, absolutely beautiful. A lot of confidence in those. Use these in the matches when we used to do the matches as well. So I used to love using these, and I still do. Take everywhere bait. I've lost count now, you This is what I have to contend with every time I go fishing. Bad angling. <laughs> no. <laughs> Being heckled. And then he has the front to turn up late and they'd expect me to wrap his rods up for him. Like some sort of some, some sort of slave and then has the audacity to question me. Is that wrapped up the fresh name wraps? Are they, are they rubbed limp for part? Wrap up. Check, my rod. Check. Wrap up. Check. Right, one. By your wrapping skill, perhaps I shouldn't ask you to. Two. Three. <laughs> so one of the things that newcomers especially um, get confused with is rigs because there's so many out there these days and uh, I tend to use two rigs that's all I'll ever use um, one for a bottom bait and one for a pop-up now everyone's seen these they're nothing new <laughs> I've been using them for about seven odd years now and that's the uh, good old faithful Ronnie rig or spinner rig or QC rig it's got so many names but it all does the same thing and this is such an adaptable rig. I absolutely love this to bits and this is the only rig I will use for pop-ups. 
And I also use it for wafters as well, it works with wafters. And what it is, it's like a boom section, which is this section here, which is really, really stiff. That's the way I prefer it, other people prefer it soft, but I like that nice and stiff. The reason I like that stiff is because if anything picks this up and ejects it, which is unlikely because this rig is so effective, but if like small fish pecking around, this will always reset itself because it is so stiff, it will always reset itself. So this is the Gemini Tidy Boom, this is the one I use, which is fused at both ends with a loop. I stick a little bit of putty over one of the fused ends there, just to balance it all out. Sometimes I don't need it, it depends on the weight of the pop-up. Sometimes the hook will just hold it up, but with this rig and what I'm using at the moment, I'm having to use a little bit of putty just to make sure that it's all pinned down. Then there's the little QC swivel there, which the hook clips into. And then I've put a little bit of silicon over the top of that just to make sure it doesn't come unclipped in the fight. Down to a tiny little bait screw. Can you see that little bait screw there? I prefer bait screws because it's quicker and easier really to put the bait on. If I'm using like double baits then obviously I'd have to use um, bait floss and use a little micro ring swivel. But for quick ease of use I like the bait screw. And then there's a little hook bead there. That's one of the new cooler ones, one of the non-slip ones, really good. It has a tendency with some other beads that I've used that the more you use them, they become looser on the hook and you'll find that that hook bead will slide around the shank. You really want it opposite the barb for it to sit properly. That's the way I use it. And that's my Ronnie rig, that's what I use for all my pop-up and wafter presentations. For bottom baits, I use this little concoction here. What that is, is like coated braid, and then I strip a piece back, enough to tie hair, and to leave a little bit there as a hinge, just above the hook. I'd like to put a little bit of putty there as well, just on the hinge, just to make sure everything's pinned to the bottom. And also they say it does aid hooking the fish in the bottom lip. I'm not sure about that, the jury's out on that one. A little bit of silicon here over the eye, which is slightly turned in, just to give it the flip over effect really. And then I like to fish it with a little bit of silicon on the shank. There. I can also use like one of those little mini big rings as a blowback, but I use both. I use both to be honest, but it doesn't really affect the hooking potential in my opinion. Now to a size four hook, I'll only use size fours or size twos. Gone are the days of me using little hooks, especially when you're fishing for big fish like they're in this lake, 40 pounders, 30 pounders, the size of their gobs is enormous. So I like a nice, nice bit of metal that's going to hook them in the bottom lip and stay in. And on there I've just got an Eclipse Bait Boily and a little Icorn. Icorn stands for Imitation Corn, it's something Eclipse have done for years. And it's made of pop-up material really, so it's buoyant. And it's a good sight as well. So it gives it something for the fish to home in on. So that's my bottom bait rig. Generally I would move or make that longer or shorter depending on, on the bottom. If it's a hard bottom, I generally use a shorter hook length. If I'm fishing just over boilies, I like to lengthen it slightly, but I'm fishing over particle and boilies on this session, so it's nice and short. And they're my two rigs, and I'll take them absolutely everywhere. There are the odd occasions where I might use something different depending on the bottom of the lake, but these are my two main rigs that I take everywhere. All right, I haven't had a take on these rods all day. So I'm gonna reel this one in and rebait it. And then I'll show you how to wrap it up so I can get it back on the same spot every time. Let's come in sweet as a nut. Nothing wrong with that rig, nothing wrong with that bait. All looks fine to me. 
So you found your spot out in the lake and uh, once you found that spot I've got a nice hard spot out there at 15 wraps. I caught fish off of it in the past so I know that's the spot I want but how do I keep getting back to that same spot every single time? So when I found that spot originally I cast out, felt the lead down on a tight line so it hits the bottom with a donk, you know that's your hard spot. I've lined that up with a marker on the far bank, a high tree or a dip in the trees so I know exactly where I've got to cast it but I need to know how far I'm casting it every single time and the way to do that is by this ingenious little invention here called distance sticks. What we used to do back in the day is walk the rigs out down the bank and uh, got a bit messy, especially if you didn't have a straight bank. So what I'm going to do now is wrap this up for you. Um, just so you know, these distance sticks are one rod length apart, which is 12 foot or four yards. So to get exact to my spot, I need to wrap around these sticks 15 times. So let's start doing that now. So place the lead next to the first distance stick. Leap on my rod, go on, scream off, and then you wrap round 15 times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and finally 15. Once you reach your 15th wrap, grab hold of your spool and then stick your line in the clip so you now know you're exactly 15 wraps, which is 60 yards. So you know when you cast that out and you line it up at that horizon marker, you're going to be hitting the same spot every single time. It's a little bit different when it comes to the spot because of the deep water out there. You want to clip the spot up probably, because I'm fishing in 24 foot of water, I will clip the spot up six foot less. Um, it's generally four foot for every foot. So if you divide that by four, that's six foot. And that's what I would do the spot map because of the pendulum of the lead and obviously you're casting the spot onto the surface and this lead is going down through the water column on a pendulum so that's why you clip the spot up a little bit less than you would your fishing rods and that's wrapping up so once that's clipped in make sure you grab the line when you reel them in because you want it to go back on the spool nice and tight Follow the line from stick to stick. Making sure it goes on the spool nicely. Like so. So you catch up with your lead. And that's all there is to it. So I'm gonna waz this in the lake now and let's see if we can get a bite. I'm going to cast this one out now. So 15 wraps. I'm in, aiming at that dip in the trees out there. So I know it's going to hit my spot. So here we go. Wish me luck. Hits the clip. Follow the lead down on a tight line. Donk. That's hit the bottom with that nice thud. So I know now that's on my spot that I've caught fish from in the past. Hopefully it's gonna do me a bite. So here's a handy little tip for you. We've all got one of these, a mobile phone. And in the apps on these phones, you've got a thing called notes. So you can write in there all your notes. So what I do, every time I go fishing, I note it down on my phone. So with the date, the lake I'm fishing, what peg I'm in, and how many reps I'm at, what I've caught, what I've caught it on, uh, horizon markers that I'm aiming at, 
and so on and so forth. You can write down whatever you want, but it's good to refer to. So if you ever come back to your lake and you're in that same peg, you can remember the amount of wraps. Was it 15 wraps? Was it 16 wraps? You know, you could forget, but you've got it written down and you can know exactly where you're going to fish to. Handy little tip for you there. If you think I like a cup of tea, the old tea bag uh, pyramid is coming on well. So at the beginning of the vlog I was telling you about the, not so much a little ledge, but a little tip for fishing in deep water if you want to draw the fish down from the upper layers down to the bottom of 30 foot of water where I'm fishing now. Well it's more 25 foot, 24 foot, but you know what I mean. Um, there's something that you can do to your spot mix that you can put flavour and, uh, and smell into the layers of the water to drag the fish down. So here's my spot mix that I've been using. I hope you can see that. In there I've got hemp, maize, boilies, and that on its own is a good load of spot mix. But to help drag the fish down, what I use is a liquid additive. These are the Eclipse Bait liquid additives, and this one's called the gravy. And what it is, it's like specially formulated. It's got like added attraction inside there and oils. So those oils are the things that are gonna leak up off the bottom through the layers of the water to try to entice those fish down onto your bait at the bottom of the lake. So all you do is once you've got your spot mix, you get your oil, give it a good shake first. And then just look how thick that is, look. It's like Marmite. Just pour that onto your spot mix. You can't overdo it. It's a great food source. And then give it a good mix up. Make sure it gets in all the grains of hemp and sweet corn, maize and glazier boilies. If you do want to do this like the night before, it'd be even better because then it will really infuse into the bait. Give that a good stir up. And then what will happen is, once you spot that out, it will start working for you. It will start going through the layers and hopefully drag those fish down to the bottom. Especially like when it's hot sunny days like this and you've got high pressure, the fish generally up in the layers, but you could always put a zig out, but I'm not a zig expert. You'd have to ask James Horn about that from Cardboard TV. But I like fishing on the bottom. And by doing this to your spot mix, it sort of helps drag those fish down where you want them, on the bottom, feeding on your bait. And the other good thing is, if you've got um, a ripple on the water, which we've got now, it can also tell you that the fish have moved in on your spot because you'll get a slick on top of the surface of the water. So you know the fish are down there, munching your bait and waiting for your alarm to go beep, and then you know you're into them. So yeah, it's a good little, good little tip adding liquid additives and oils into your spot mix to drag the fish down to the bottom. So, why haven't I been fishing? And why haven't I been filming? Well, I've probably only done, well, this is my fourth trip this year. And the main reason that I haven't been getting out and fishing is I've been so, well, suffering from depression and mental health issues and a lot of anxiety. Now I know I'm not the only one, there's a lot of you guys out there suffering as well, guys and girls. Um, people who know me know I absolutely adore fishing. I love fishing to bits, it's all I ever think about. I go to bed dreaming about fishing. I adore it, I absolutely adore it. So for me to not feel the motivation to get on the bank and go fishing, it's just not me, it's just not me at all. I was always trying to find excuses as to why I didn't want to go fishing. I would think, is it going to rain? The aggro of loading the car up. Am I going to get the swim I want? Am I going to blank? Am I going to lose a fish? All negative thoughts. And the thought of staying at home, safe in my own four walls, was greater than getting out on the bank. Now that's pretty awful, that's horrific. When you love fishing as much as I do, I knew something was wrong, I knew something was wrong. I was waking up in the mornings being sick, 
generally not feeling great. Um, the knot in my stomach <laughs> is enormous, it's, it's awful. The way I can describe it is like you're about to be executed, I know that sounds awful but a sense of foreboding, a sense that something horrible is going to happen every time I wake up in the mornings. Now I've seeked help, um, I've been to see my GP, they have put me on antidepressants and I have felt a lot better since taking them. I'm still not right, but what I think I'm really trying to tell you is, well I'm not preaching because I'm not an expert, I'm only suffering it and I know other people it comes out different in other people but get yourself on the bank if you can I've had to force myself to get down here but I'm so glad I did the medicine of being outdoors and seeing some of the sunrises I've seen on this week is amazing like I haven't caught fish yet but at the end of the day fishing is not just about catching the fish it's about being outdoors seeing nature getting the fresh air meeting with your mates and having a giggle so I think that's what I'm trying to say to you is it, it, even if it feels like a bind just load your car up and get down here I've only done four sessions and once I'm here and I'm fishing I feel so good I feel so good especially when I'm catching I've had some really good sessions this year I had a 24 hour session just up the bank here in the swim that's doing really well today and I had eight carp um, 230s, 420s and a couple of high doubles and then I went with my mate Lee a couple of weeks later further down the bank down that way and I had 320s in the night and everything was rosy it was fantastic and then the moment I get home I start looking forward to my next trip and then I'm thinking what what if it rains on me what if I it just sounds stupid it sounds ridiculous but it's just the way I'm feeling Hence, there's been no vlogs from me on Carp Vault or my reality carp fishing channel. I just haven't had the motivation and the confidence to do it, which is really strange because usually I'm confident in front of a camera. You know, I've done YouTube for years, I've worked for BT Sport making TV programs. Never felt the way I felt now. But I'm here now, I'm going to give it a go. I haven't caught yet, but I'm going to keep trying. And I'm going to have a, try and have a lot of fun trying as well. So that's what I'm saying. Chin up guys and girls. If you're feeling as low as I am. Please try and get on the bank. Because being here now. I feel fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Wow, it's like old times isn't it? It's is like old times like mate. The old reality carp fishing days. Jesus where are they gone? We haven't done a film for bloody hell. Three years. No, two years. Three years. It was just after lockdown, wasn't it? Well, it might have been lockdown yeah. then. We went up on a rugby, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, I did one on my own over on the burrows, but yeah, it's been a long time, mate. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been a long time, what, with one thing and another? Yeah, life, I think. Life in general. I've already discussed what's been going on in my life. I know you've had a bit of drama as well going on in yours. <laughs> we all have a bit of drama. <laughs> But yeah, I found Mr. Lee May, who is fishing next door to me. I haven't just found him, I've just dragged him off the street or anything. Although it does take a lot to find me these days. <laughs> so eventually we're on the bank together. Um, isn't going too well at the moment, but there's still time, mate. Yeah, there's always, what was that old adage we was talking about earlier? Um, Baits like, in the water, water, there's a chance. There's a chance, that's exactly right. Yeah. So, but the reason I've grabbed you is because back in the spring you had a special capture, didn't you? Oh, I did have a special capture, funnily enough. So let's uh, tell the ladies and gentlemen about this special capture that you had. So I turned up on a Friday while I was off work. I turned up mid-afternoon, I suppose, yeah. during a late spring. I wouldn't say it was an early spring, it was a late spring. Um, see some fish found the lake to be not very busy, which is unusual. It is. Um, opted to go in uh, this particular swim uh, where the fish were. Got my rods out. 
um, they continue to stay there for a little while. Bearing in mind, I only fish two rods now, and most people on the lake fish three rods, so um, I still stuck to my guns, my usual approach. Um, keep the rods um, tight to a spot to an extent, a couple of feet apart and just try and keep one spot going. And if I need to, I can always still move one rod um, and cast a show and fish if I need to. But you once you start to get bites, yeah. you're all right. Did you use a lot of bait? Um, on this particular occasion, no. I used a different approach though um, to what I'm using now. I didn't have as much particle with me as I would usually like to take. Um, I was mainly boilies, mm. but I went down the road of uh, what most people on here would probably avoid because of the bream, but I use pellets. Mm. Bold? Uh, very bold. Um, and, and just very small amounts of bait. Being as it's spring and mm. they were waking up and wanting, pro wanting to probably eat before, um, before spawning. They would like a bit of protein um, and some high energy food. So mm. I just put a couple of bombs out onto a spot. My mate James turned up. Um, late in the evening after work. Um, bearing in mind, you, when you're setting up, you take a little while to faff around anyway. Yeah. Um, that's what I did, put my rods out. The fish showed over the spots a couple of times, and James is like, crikey, they're here. I said, yeah, I've, I've seen him here, mate. He's just slowly, slowly catchy monkey, as they yeah. say. So, because it was quite weedy back then as well, I was fishing just over the back of some weed, um, not the usual distances that people would usually fish um, because I found a spot that literally was like fishing on a car park I'm, and this place, you, you, spots like that are a little bit rare yeah. so that was from earlier when I had that and I thought well you know what I'll put another couple of spawns out and while they're there just see if you can just make them drop down and literally on the second spawn just as I reeled it in the rod, it didn't rattle off, it pulled up tight and sort of James and I looked at each other and looked at the rod and it just clicked away, like click, 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 as it does. Uh, and that's when I thought, well, it's away. Struck into the fish, lifted in, and it immediately felt heavy. And I thought, I wonder if that's because of the weed. And it just plodded around in front of me for probably 10 minutes and I didn't move it from the range that it was at for probably 10 minutes and it almost felt like it had locked up it just sort of sat and I thought surely I'm not got snagged in the weed with the lead or something just applied a little bit of pressure um, and, and kept the pressure applied because it had only been in there for 10-15 seconds something like that where it's just stopped it wasn't kiting pulled it out came to the top and again it was just plodding around left and right and left and right until it came under the rod tip and it was still deep it, none of your lead core or any of the leader showed nothing yeah. like that and it probably was another five ten minutes in front of me until it popped up and boiled on the surface and by then your arsehole's probably going like that isn't it uh no it didn't it didn't initially at first i thought it's going to oh, be a good fish no i thought <laughs> it's definitely a good fish but i didn't see enough of it at the time to, to to think it was as good as it was and james was like oh that's a good fish mate so played it again for yeah, another cool. just like that yeah. <laughs> just like that it must be common got it back in towards where the net was um and as it rolled up onto the surface, you could then see it was an half decent fish. I got it into the net and I thought, oh, it's going to be close to my PB because my PB from this lake was 36.4 or something like that. Yeah. And I thought, it looks close. It looks close. And it wasn't until we put the rod down, sort yourself out, get your mat and everything ready. Just left the fish safe in the net in the water um, while everything was made ready to minimise the time on the bank, Yeah. camera, all of that. And it's just getting sort of dusk now, it's about half past six, seven o'clock, something like that. And I go over to lift the net, I thought, shall I look it in the water? So I got into my crocs, I thought, I'll go and I'll look it in the water. I looked it in the water, so I'm not dragging line through all of that. It's only in the edge. And then when I lifted the net and looked at it, it was huge across the back. <laughs> oh, wow. And I thought, <laughs> That's a bit of a donkey, that's not just, for, that could be upper 30, even 40. And James is like, that's big mate, that's big. What was your PB? I was like, 30, he says, beat that. So like, right, let's weigh it then. That's when you start to get anxious. Yeah, it's already in the net, but you're anxious. Part of his growing up. No. 
it was none of that. I was just like, all right, let's just see. <laughs> Got it out, into a, put it into a safety sling, waist sling, so I didn't lift it out in the net, made sure it was all safe, and James and I carried it over into the unhooking mat. Safely transferred from the net to the waist sling. Um, sorry, before we did that, we wet the waist sling yeah. and zeroed the scales before we put the fish yeah, um, very wise, yeah. into the net. So we knew straight away, reading, yeah. accurate yeah. reading. Yeah. Um, once the fish was in the... Um, it got laid on the net and on the mat, transferred it from that into the weigh scales. Um, and I said to James, do the honours. So we sort of picked it up. I picked it up and held it on, on the bar through the, the, the thing. He said, come James, tell me. Put yeah. me out of my misery. He went, what was your PB again? I said, 36.4. He went, you broke that. He went, oh, it's 39.12. <laughs> and I went, what? So close to a 40. And he just started laughing. And I was like, no, oh, come on, what is it really? He went, 39.12. And I went, oh, I, you know that gutted it was nearly a 40. Yeah, but still happy. I, my, I was so happy and my heart almost sunk because it was nearly a 40. Yeah. He went, only joking, 41.2 or 41.4. Mm. I put the fish down, I said, shut up, now you are joking. I was really serious. And he went, honestly, 41.2. So I was like, all right, I'll take it, it's a 40. Welcome to the 40s club. And had some photos. Um, that was that, and it, it looks every inch of... It's an impressive fish. 40 to 41 pound, two ounces. It's a chunk, mate. Yeah, um, first 40 from the lake. Not yeah. one that I've seen um, myself. So jealous. Um, <laughs> Most of the ones that are 40 now, um, apart from the one that's dead, the pig, yeah. um, I've caught at lower weights. Yeah, I've probably had a few at lower weights, because I'd say I've fished here for a lot of years, but I've never cracked a 40 and you've beat me to it. Well, well your mate. time will come, mate. Your time will come. There's oh, so many of them in here now. Yeah, I know, I know. Hopefully this session, but I'm not holding out for it at the moment. Given the amount of time we've both been members and we've seen the stamp of fish and the average weights and the size of the bigger fish creep up year upon year well, upon year, you know, a 30 you, was the late record. Yeah, you were in the same boat as me not so long ago. We can catch the fish, but we just can't get catch the biggins. No. Right, there's a guy next door to us who's absolutely hauling at the moment. He's got the fish right in front of him. And every fish he's catching is a 30 pounder. You just, I think you he's had 12 fish and he's had 10 30s. You couldn't make it up. I mean, good luck to him. Yeah, you, mate, you've got... he's making hay while the sun shines and that's brilliant. And I'd do the same and you'd do the same. But it just shows you, I was just saying to Lee before, I bet we get a take tonight and it'll be a 17 pounder. Yeah, <laughs> a bit of stocky or a mid double, yeah, something like that. You can't choose which picks up your bait, you just can't. You've just got to. Get your bait out there. I know that a big one comes along and picks it up and that's what happens to you with a 40. I'm so pleased you've got that monkey off your back. Um, now it's time to get that monkey off mine, I think. It is. Uh, and sometimes the planets just align uh, yeah. for you, you know? I yeah. mean, I, I took my time with things. I built all new rigs. I took my time setting up. I wasn't thrashing the water to a yeah. foam. I wasn't spodding. Mm. I think I literally put a lead on my spod rod after I took my spot off because I just wanted to see where the weed was and just cast out two or three times beyond the fish and just wanted to see what sort of the bottom was like. And we know it's clay and we know it can be soft, but I just wanted to f f feel the, the range of the weed. Mm. And once I clipped up to where the weed was, I sort of had one cast for a reference point where the plop was, unclipped it, went beyond that and it was not by chance, but I knew the sort of spots that you fish from that particular swim. Mm. But because I was fishing shorter on the same markings, it was probably four foot behind that weed line. That it was like hitting the swim, bang, yeah, yeah. bang, big hard spot. And putting putting my bait out. Oh look, it's going to go through my lines. These birds are a pain in the bum. We've well, we're not catching fish. We're taking to naming the birds. What have we said so far? We got. We've Bob. got, we've got Bob. Well, one leg. One leg. We got John Cronin. John Cronin. And we got eight leg coot. An eight leg coot. Yeah, <laughs> the one that's crazy in front of the swim. Yeah, we've got like an octopus legs at the bottom. <sighs> and. Um, do baby swans look like Bruce Forsyth? <laughs> Your favourite one? Yes, they do. Yeah, they do a bit. But yeah, so I'm glad you got that monkey off your back, mate. I'm glad you got that 40. Um, I've caught them in France, caught them to 50 in France, but I still can't crack it in the UK. How long have I been fishing now? Bloody hell. 
Longer than I've been alive. 40 years, 41 years I've been Longer fishing. than I've been alive. I still haven't caught a UK 40. It's got to happen soon, isn't it? All the time your bait's in the water, there's a chance. Well, but we've got Sandhurst next week, mate, so... Yes. yes, it could happen now. If it doesn't happen tonight. No. Save it up. Use all your bad luck up this weekend. Save it for Sandhurst next weekend. Well, thanks, Lee. Thanks for sharing your story. No, that's all right. I hope we can share some fish. Let's hope there's some more stories to come. Mm. So, as we go into the final night, I think I've done everything I can possibly do. Um, I've changed one of the rods to 17 wraps. I had them both at 15. So I've changed one of them to 17 because I see a few fish show a bit further out. Um, so I've stuck a Eclipse pineapple pop up out there. Um, about six bombs over the top. And I've kept the other rod where it was over the bait on a bottom bait and an icon topper. Oh, fingers crossed for tonight, eh? Chose this swim because when I walked around when I got here, there was a few fish showing at 60 yards in front of this swim. The peg that I wanted, two or three down that way, there was someone in it, and that's the swim that's absolutely rinsed it. So, and my swim choice would have been right. I know they like this area, this time of year when there's a stale wind. There's a big storm front coming in on Friday, but I'm going to be at home, unfortunately. Giving it three nights, so can't do much more than that at the moment. Just got to hope on this final night that we can get a pick up and get a carp on the bank for you. Fingers crossed. Well, the dreaded pack down has begun, and uh, yeah, another blank night. Can't work it out. <laughs> I was really hoping for a fish this session. Never mind, that's fishing, isn't it? Can't win them all. But hopefully I've shown you a few little tips. You know, you've learned something if you're a new angler. Um, so if that has, then the session has been worthwhile. If you do like this sort of content, please subscribe to Carp Walk TV and uh, drop a comment below if you've got any comments on um, anything that I've discussed during this video um, if you want to know any tips or tactics of anything I've discussed or any general chit chat about mental health or whatever I'll reply to everyone um, so yeah please like and say please subscribe and hit the bell icon as well because that really helps the channel and then you'll never miss another video so thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you all soon bye for now